Hi, Phyllis here from southernfrugal.com. Well, we're going to fix a uh, roast in the oven, and I'm just going to show you how I fix this roast. I've been fixing it this way for many, many years, but um, you can, this is, uh, this roast, well, let me show you. This roast is, see if you can see that, uh, it's the bottom of the round roast. And, you know, it's, I mean, I call it a rump roast. I mean, it really isn't, but it's very close. But anyway, I got it on sale a couple of weeks ago before Mr. Bucky got sick. So I thought I'd go ahead and fix it today. And what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll slice it and go ahead and freeze part of it. But anyway, I just wanted to give you another update. Mr. Bucky's coming home tomorrow morning. Uh, at least we think he is. If all the tests go okay today, this afternoon, uh, they said he can come home tomorrow, so he's very excited. So he told me, don't come up today. He said, you know, go on and do your shopping or whatever, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. So I said, all right. So I went to Walmart and a couple other places to do some shopping, and uh, so I'm feeling really good. So. Anyway, I want to go ahead and uh, rinse this roast off a little bit, and I'll show you how I wrap it and get it ready to cook. So we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I've got my roast washed, and see it's got a thick layer of fat on the bottom. So I'm just going to scoot this off. This is just an old uh, cake pan, and I just use this because it's a good size for the roast. So I'm just going to scoot that off in there, the fat side down. Now, I've got my oven heating at 400 degrees, so I'm going to leave it in there 30, maybe even 45 minutes till it gets good and brown all over. Then I'm going to uh, add the salt and a little bit of garlic powder and probably some red wine. And so, anyway, uncover it until it gets brown good. Now, see, it's got a little indicator to tell you when it's done right there. So when that pops up, it'll be done. But anyway, I know I don't cook mine like everybody else, but we cook it uh, mainly for the beef to be able to slice it real thin for sandwiches. That's the way I like it anyway. And, uh, you know, maybe for a meal too. But anyway, this is about a four pound roast. So we're gonna put it in the oven, 400 degrees for 30, maybe 45 minutes till it gets good and brown on top. We'll be back. Okay, the uh, little roast has been brown in the oven. It's only just a little bit brown. I'm going to add some garlic salt right on the top of it. Maybe a tablespoon, oh, excuse me, about a teaspoon or so, and just a little bit of salt, not much. And now I'm going to add, oh, I don't know, probably a cup of red wine right in here so Mr. Bucky's not here to open the wine so I'm gonna have to struggle with that so we'll be back okay me and the wine bottle have all uh, wrestled around a bit but I think I've got it coming out hopefully it is there we go I know you can get those kind of little dip jiggers. I've seen them on television where you just plop it down and you pop it right out, but Mr. Bucky's always here to let them. So, there. Okay, I, I need to go rest or something now. All right, so I'm going to taste of this and make sure I like it. <clears throat> so, sound not very much about wine. Of it. It's good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pour probably about a cup over this. All right, that ought to be enough right there. All right, I'm exhausted from trying to open the wine. All right, so we're just going to cover this up with the tin foil now and put it back in the oven for about 275 degrees for probably a couple more hours. 
So I'm going to seal it up, not super tight, but you know, leave a little space for the steam to escape. Got it. Okay. All right. We're going to put this. Sorry, y'all couldn't see that. Anyway, I just wrapped it all over with tinfoil. It's got probably a cup of the red wine in there, garlic, and some salt. So once this is done, we'll be back. Okay, the uh, roast is done. And I didn't really time it that well just because I knew the uh, little, see that little thing right there would pop up when it was done. Now, I'm going to let this cool completely before I actually slice it and make myself a sandwich, but I thought I would cut off just a little bit, just a little bit, and have a taste of it. There it is. Got to dip it in some of the liquid. Mm -mm -mm. It smells really good. The wine gives it a little bit of a sweet taste, and you can uh, taste some of the garlic. Mm. So I'm going to let it cool, and I'm going to slice some off real, real thin to make a sandwich. So I'm going to wait until it cools, and we'll be back. I forgot to show you this part. I'm going to strain this liquid into a cup through a little strainer. just put it in the refrigerator and let all that fat come to the surface then I'm going to dip it off and we'll have a nice little dipping sauce. I might even add a little more garlic to it. All right when the rest cools we'll be back and I'll cut this thing. All right be back in a minute. Okay here's the roast. Now I want to have to tell you that uh, I did end up putting it in the microwave for about five minutes on high because it was a little rare for me. I wanted mine well done because I'm slicing it really really thin and I'm going to make myself a sandwich and have some of the kale soup. So I'll uh, fix that sandwich and we'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. I wanted to come back real quick and show you how I make the little uh, sauce for this. Now these are the drippings uh, that came, you know, that were in the, the tin foil and I put it in the refrigerator. Actually I put it in the freezer to get it cool. So now all I want to do is thicken it and I'm going to add a little more um, garlic powder. So I'm giving a big heaping tablespoon of just regular cornstarch. So I'm going to add a little more garlic to that just because I really like the garlic. And then I'm going to turn that burner on on high and use my whisk and just stir that around until that cornstarch dissolves. And all you really have to do is let it uh, come up to a boil, and then the uh, liquid will turn clear, and that way it's done. And, you know, if you get it too thick, you can add a little more water. If it's not thick enough, what you need to do is add the uh, cornstarch, maybe a teaspoon, in with a little bit of water and mix it up before you put it in. All right, so we'll be back when this comes to a boil. Okay, my gravy has come to a boil, and, or my sauce, really. See how it's all clear now? So I'm getting ready to make myself a sandwich. I'm going to use a little bit of this on each side of the bread. When I get all that fixed and my soup warming, uh, it's already warming up in the microwave, we'll be right back. Okay, my supper is ready. I went ahead and heated up another cup of this kale soup. There's my sandwich. All right, so what I'm going to do, oops, what I, sorry. What I'm going to do is uh, let this uh, roast cool off, and probably put it in the refrigerator, then tomorrow I can, let me turn it around there, there. Then tomorrow I can uh, slice it really thin, uh, even thinner than what I sliced this. So, okay, I wanted to give y'all an update. All right, let me back off. All right. Uh, 
in between all this, uh, I went ahead and uh, called Mr. Bucky at his room, and uh, the surgeon was in there, and it was like 7.30, I think, at night. Uh, the surgeon works a lot of late hours, I think, but anyway, um, Mr. Bucky said uh, he wanted me to talk to him, so he put him on the phone, and so he started telling me about the diet. Here's the good news. He can drink green smoothies every morning all day long if he wants, so he told me that the only problem with raw stuff is if you're chewing it up, because he said he is actually operated on people with bowel blockages and actually pulled out pieces of uh, broccoli. Yeah, broccoli. Can you imagine? And he said sometimes, it, you know, it's on salad bars and everything and people think they're chewing it up but they're really not and they just go ahead and swallow it. And he said he's operated on people and actually pulled those pieces out of them. So anyway, um, he said that there was no problem like with the kale or any of that as long as I put it in the Vitamix and it was all ground up. So I was thinking when they said nothing raw, they meant, you know, you couldn't actually use anything raw even in the Vitamix, but they say you can. So that's really good news. So I'm gonna try to get some sleep tonight. We, it, it seems peaceful now. Uh, the surgeon did tell me that uh, he, they're waiting for the, to get the lab reports because Mr. Bucky had uh, some, uh, 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 let me see, I'm trying to think of the right word. Uh, the function of his kidneys had gone down, the function of his liver had gone down, and clearly the lung problem was there because he had fluid in his lungs. I mean, it was just, it's just been a devastating illness, and I can certainly see how uh, people that get food poisoning can die because your, your whole body just starts shutting down. And we went through that several days ago, and it, it, I was very worried. But uh, now we know everything's fine, and so the surgeon just told Bucky to drink lots of water tonight. They're going to recheck the kidney thing tomorrow because it's only down just a little bit, and the liver is already okay. So, uh, and of course his lungs are clear now. So uh, we're just waiting on on the kidney, uh, the blood test for the kidneys to come back clear or on the level it's supposed to be on and we can bring him home. So he told me that he's gonna get the results like at eight o'clock tomorrow. So uh, Mr. Buggy told me to stay here until he calls me. So when he calls me, it'll take me about 45 minutes to get up there and uh, we're gonna bring him home. So I am so happy and I know I'm gonna sleep well tonight. So thank y'all for all of your prayers and your thoughts. Uh, it really, it really meant a lot. This is probably the worst time we have ever gone through, uh, you know, together. Um, certainly the worst illness that, that either one of us have ever seen. So, and all from eating at a restaurant, y'all. Just, uh, you know, several of y'all have made comments. Mr. Bucky says he's never going to eat in a restaurant again, but I'm sure that'll change at some point. But we sure are never, ever, ever, ever going to eat from a salad bar again. Just, it's just never going to happen. So, uh, and uh, I mean, this is the rest of our lives. I, I, I was always not real happy about that anyway, but now there's just no way. Salad bars are forever gone in my mind. So now if they bring a salad from the kitchen, you know, we know of a couple of places that are really careful and particular and they, they don't have all this extra pasta and all that kind of stuff to, I mean, they just dump it in on top, you know, and then if it doesn't, I mean, think about that, like the mushrooms. Okay, so nobody eats very many of them, but they want it filled up to the top, so they just come and dump a bunch more on. Well, you know the ones on the bottom are bad, or worse yet, they bring a new one out and dump the others on top of them. Uh, it's just bad. It's just bad, and I, I think a lot of people have been sick from salad bars in restaurants, really. I mean, I haven't looked that up on Google, but I bet it's a lot, lot of people. Anyway, you see how tired I am? I mean, it's been, what, nine days of just touch and go, and then uh, several days ago it was a really, really bad day. But now everything's looking up. All right, so uh, I don't know if I'll do a video tomorrow because I'll be waiting for them to call me. Uh, I'll probably be too excited to even make a smoothie tomorrow, but uh, anyway, I've got some uh, whole wheat uh, uh, little um, uh, muffins that I made 
that I've had in the freezer for a while, so I might just have a muffin tomorrow and go. I might want to talk to y'all tomorrow, though. I'm so happy. All right, we will see y'all next time. Now, I want to add one other thing. This uh, roast was is a cheap type of roast, and so if you want your super tender, you're going to have to cook it longer. But here's the thing. If you cook it longer, it's going to kind of fall apart. So I don't cook mine as long, although I don't want it, like, rare. But I don't cook it as long, and then I, when I refrigerate it and it gets cold, you can slice it almost paper thin, and that's when it's really the best, in my opinion. That's the way I like it anyway. So anyway, we will see you all next time.